G'day, welcome to the channel. A very um, off the top of my head video at the moment. This is from off the cuff. I haven't researched this. I've just read a few pages of this document that dropped today. Now, Tyler Brennan, Race Day Quads, they filed a motion in the, um, what is it, the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia against the FAA and the remote ID rule that's being introduced. It's done, it's the final rule has been, has been completed and they've filed a protest saying, we don't want this and you can't do this. Now, I was going to do a video on the Race Day Quads um, petition, but I thought, ah, no, I've got some insight. I think I've got some insight into this. And I think that if I do too much research and come up with my points of view, that could be used against them because obviously the FAA are looking for ways to defeat this petition. I don't want to give the FAA any ammunition. Now, one of the things that I noticed immediately with the Race Day Quads petition was that they were relying on the Fourth Amendment of the US Constitution. I knew immediately that would fail. I knew it would fail because safety and security, national safety and security, that's what's driving remote ID. And we've already seen in the USA, I mean, I, I, it, it really saddens me to see that the USA was once a proud nation whose citizens were protected by an ironclad constitution that was invariant. It could, it couldn't, it controlled what governments could and couldn't do. It gave the ultimate power to the citizens. And that's the way it should be because power corrupts. And if you give it to a group of small people in Congress or whatever, they don't always do the right thing. So the people need to have that ultimate power, that ultimate control. However, governments are smart. They invented the war against terror. And through that, they've been able to chip away at the constitutional protections that US citizens enjoy. And by saying, oh, we have to, you know, uh, sidestep the Constitution in this case because it's for your own safety, it's your own good, it's your own protection. Of course, people generally are trusting and stupid and they go, yeah, OK, well, yeah, we're prepared to give up a little bit of our protection or constitutional rights in return for safety and security. We don't want to be the victim of a terrorist attack. So we'll let the government, they know what they're doing. They can sidestep the, the, the Constitution in this case. But it's a thin end of the wedge thing, as I've said so often before. That's the way governments work. Thin end of the wedge. You start small and you increment so slowly that people don't realise what they're losing until it's gone and they've got nothing they can do to recover it. Now, in this case, Race Day Quads said, you cannot put remote ID in our quads because it amounts to an, an unwarranted search, which is protected under the Fourth Amendment of the US Constitution. And the FAA, let me just find the page. Um, where are we? Um, the page numbering is this document. It's all funny because the page numbering on the left doesn't match the pages on the document itself. I think it's somewhere around here. Okay, I'm down at page 30 of this document, 30 of 86, 86, 86 pages. This is as far as I've got, but they've got this summary of argument. This is their defense against the, the case mounted by Race Day Quads. And um, what Race Day Quads contended was that it was an unreasonable search in violation of the Fourth Amendment. And the FAA is saying, no, no, it's not. And they go through and explain why it's not, and they cite case law and all sorts of things. But finally, they, 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 they use their get out of jail free card, the get out of jail free card that the American citizens have given their government through not paying attention. And they say, even if the rules requirements amounted to a search under the Fourth Amendment, any such search would not be subject to the Fourth Amendment's warrant requirement because the rule is justified by, quotes, special needs associated with public safety and national Security. That's right, you guys. You gave up your constitutional protections to get safety and security. And now that's being used against you because anytime the government wants to do something that is unconstitutional, they simply roll out public safety and national security. And the protections of the Constitution are set aside by the courts. It's happened before. It will happen again in this case. The Fourth Amendment will provide no protection because the, the, the FAA are saying we need remote ID to keep, the, to keep the country safe and to keep our secrets secure, keep, keep people from, from being killed or injured and to make sure that our national security is not compromised. And now this is where I think there's a possibility to argue a case against remote ID because the FAA have asserted this, but they haven't proved it. And on page 20 of the document, which is actually page seven of their response, um, they go on to, they say here, um, where is it? The FAA characterized the remote ID requirements as a digital license plate for unmanned aircraft systems and explained that the rule was necessary to ensure the safety and efficiency of the airspace of the United States. Now, my response would be to say, well, show me how not having remote ID on drones has caused any significant injury, 
any death, any major property damage, or any compromise of the United States security. Because I'm pretty sure they haven't. I haven't found any instances where any of those things have occurred as a result of drones not having remote ID, because they don't have them now. And so we've had, well, almost 10 years of recreational multi-rotor drones being flown without remote ID, yet I do not know of one instance where anyone has been very badly injured or killed, or where the national security has been compromised through that lack of remote ID. So this boils down to the FAA is making an assertion. We need this rule because, but they're not providing any facts to back up that assertion. And in most countries, I don't know about the USA, um, perhaps they're different, but in most countries, they do not, the, the governments are not allowed to pass frivolous rules or laws. Rules or laws must serve a purpose. So you must justify those rules or laws by proving there is a purpose. Now, I believe that the threshold of proof provided by the FAA is insufficient here. They've not proven the need for remote ID because they cannot cite any instances where having remote ID would have prevented something bad from happening because nothing bad has happened. So they are drawing a very long bow. If I was in court, I would be arguing that the FAA may have the authority to create this rule, but they do not have the right because it is a frivolous rule without proof of need. Now that's where I'd be arguing. So hopefully that's of use. I don't know. As I say, I'm not a lawyer and I'm just arguing from the court of common sense and with a little bit of experience. So perhaps you can see why I didn't want to do a video pulling apart Race Day Quads case because I might have given some ammo to the FAA. I'm hoping I'm giving some ammo to Race Day Quads to use against the FAA. I may be totally wrong. I may be totally, you know, barking up the wrong tree, but I want to do something positive here. And in my first reading of this first bit of this document, these are the things that have jumped out at me. So I'm going to leave it there because I've got a lot more reading to do, a lot more research to do, a lot more thinking to do, to see if I can come up with some, hopefully some insights we can use to counter this response by the FAA. Um, I'll probably be talking to Jonathan Ruprecht, the lawyer for Race Day Quads directly. I've got to get hold of him. I may do an interview with him and perhaps Tyler. Uh, if you're interested in that, just say in the comments if you want to see that. Try and bring some brainstorming in here. I mean, these uh, Jonathan is an excellent lawyer. He's very good at what he does. And I think he's probably the right man for the job. But I'm just hoping that by being sl slightly out of the picture standing to one side I can have enough of a different perspective to perhaps throw a few little things into the pot which may or may not make a difference we don't know anyway that's what I've been doing that's why this video is here I'll be as I say there'll be a much more comprehensive video coming up in the meantime I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters because you guys give me the time the freedom to do this kind of work which is so important for the hobby absolutely important for the hobby if we don't do this we're going to lose much of our freedoms and the hobby will just waste away so the Patreon, the people who give me a buck a month or whatever through Patreon make it possible for me to do this. So if, if you know, if you're one of those people who are benefiting from this, then you should be thanking my Patreon supporters. They are the people who are saving the hobby. One dollar at a time. <laughs> anyway, I'll put a link in the description. I'm not pitching, I'm not panhandling, but if you do want to support what I'm doing, feel free to throw a dollar my way. If if you want to, if you don't, that's fine. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not forcing anybody's hands. Anyway, I've got to get on with this. It's really, really important, and I don't see anyone else stepping up to the plate, so I'm going for it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Overregulation is like a tumor. It's killing a hobby. It must be terminated. Now!